Sub-Saharan Africa, with a population of more than one billion people, has the world's highest prevalence of sickle cell disease. With 75% of sickle cell disease patients living in this part of the world, these numbers are projected to rise. Annually, 33,000 babies are born in Uganda with sickle cell disease. 80% of them will die before their fifth birthday. My name is John Musagala. I uh, was born and raised here in Jinja. I'm married with uh, one son, Hezekiah, and my wife, Beth, been married for 14 years. I do missionary work with my family and helping people. Um, that's, that's what is on my heart. I was born with sickle cell anemia. The memories that I have were around four years. Uh, my mother took me to this hospital and we had to walk for about uh, five to seven miles. It was one of those diseases people didn't want to talk about. You become ostracized because um, you have this disease. So growing up wasn't easy. This disease, they even gave me years. They said you cannot live up to seven years. You cannot live up to 12 years. The sickle cell disease patient's red blood cells go into a C-shape. As they flow through the patient's blood vessels, they stick together. And as they stick together, they clog up the small blood vessels, what we call the capillaries. When they block the capillaries, we do not have oxygen going to the patient's tissues. This is when we say the patient is in a painful crisis. I would say it's kind of emotional talking about that pain because um, things like a normal father would do with their children. I can't do those things. You cannot even lift your arm, but you're feeling pain, excruciating pain. I've seen people die of it, uh, that have been my friends, that have passed on. With the crisis, it's so painful and it leaves a long lasting effect in your body. Red blood cell exchange is when the doctor removes the patient's red blood cells and replaces them with safe donor red blood cells. And what this does to the patient's body is the patient is going to have more red blood cells that are healthy and they're able to transport oxygen throughout the body. This is going to improve their quality of life. In 2018, I got a bad crisis, a very bad crisis here in Jinja. When I got to the International Hospital, they referred me to Nakasero Hospital, which is in Kampala. They were like, we can't handle this pain. They gave me pain meds, put me in the ambulance, and this guy drove this ambulance, a place that takes you three hours. He drove it within 45 minutes. I first met John, and I met him in the intensive care. He had had some chest complication and uh, he was in significant pain. He was on high flow oxygen. He was on quite potent narcotic medications to relieve pain. And he had also received some blood transfusions. Talking to Dr. Sally, I'm like, what options are there that we can use to kill this pain off my body? And so he tells me hey, there is this machine called Optia. Spectra Optia can perform red blood cell exchange. That was the only time that pain left my body. The guys that made this machine, I think they're the best people on planet. And I think they were thinking about people with sickle cells when they created this machine. I was the second person in the whole country of Uganda to be hooked on Optia. Therapeutic apheresis is relatively a new field of science in this part of the world. We have opened up our first office in Nairobi, Kenya, to serve the sub-Saharan African market. Nowadays, we are trying as much as possible to teach people about sickle cell and say, hey, look, this is not the end of the world. You can live. I'm 40 years old and I'm still pushing on. 